सो हेलो एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेल टू एम डी एस डेंटल अकेडमी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मलिक त्रिवेदी आई एम पीडियाटिक डेंटिस्ट एंड असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन कॉलेज ऑफ डेंटल साइंसिस सो फ्रेंड नाउ फ्यू डेज आर लेफ्ट फॉर एग्जामिनेशन सो आई थॉट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू शूड रिवाइज द इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जाम्स सो टूडे वील डील विद द इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑफ द ओरल पैथोलॉजी एंड द ओरल मेडिसिन सो दिस कंप्लीट वीडियो I made from the Naval Regazian Scuba and Atlas of Oral Pathology. So please note it down. They can be asked in the examination. So first, on the right side, we can see the diagram that is the indurated ulcers on the palate. Remember, it indicates the tuberculosis ulcers. They are painful. Then, in this diagram, we can see the opacity of the palate with the tiny spots. This tiny spots indicate your salivary. gland duct orifices and this is the classical picture for your nicotina stomatitis then we see the herpes simplex infection remember in herpes we have first vesicle formation which ruptures and leave the ulcerated area there are of two type there is a first is the herpetic gingival stomatitis and herpes labialis then in secondary herpes simplex infection when the reactivation of the virus occur we can see the intraoral lesions mostly on the palatal area fine then we have the geographic term so everybody know it's the white serpiginous line okay covering the deep palatal areas so this is a classical picture of your eczema migraines then there is the oral lacrimal planus you can see this white stray interconnected stray okay it indicates your lacrimal planus and remember lichen planus is seen bilaterally and your lichen or reaction is seen unilaterally now you can see here the asymptomatic okay red granulation mass on the tongue so this indicates your pyogenic granuloma it is also seen on the gingiva then here there is a central papillary atrophy of tongue it indicates your median rhomboid glossitis so now what is this This is the well circumscribed elevated ulcers with central keratin plugging. It indicates your keratacentroma, most commonly seen on the exposed area of the body. You know this ulcer has three stages. First, it rapidly develops in four to six weeks. Then it undergo involution for a period of six to eight weeks. Then it ruptures. Then we have this elevated lesion on the lip. This indicates your mucosal. but it is of extra resistant type of mucosal most commonly seen due to the rupture of the salivary so in this diagram you can see the lateral neck swelling remember the lateral neck swelling is asymptomatic and fluctuant and soft it's indication of your brachial cyst and you can see here the swelling showing the sinus formation present in the midline this is the thyroglossal cyst remember it moves when you swallow and most commonly seen at or above the thyroid gland then we have this periapical cyst you can see the well defined radiolucency surrounded by the cortical borders and also you can see the carious tooth then there is a later uh, root cyst surrounding at the later aspect of the root there is also radiolucency surrounded by the well demarcated border then we have odontogenic myxoma in this we can see the step ladder appearance if this septa are small it looks like the honeycomb appearance then we have periapical cementosis dysplasia it's a variant of your periapical cemented dysplasia so this lesion have two stage early stage and the late stage early it will appear like the periapical radiolucency then with passage of time there appears a tiny radiopaque spots which enlarge and coalesce to increase opacification so what you can see here you can see the tiny radio opaque spots in the radiolucent area surrounded by the radiolucent peripheries so this indicate your periapical cementosis dysplasia and also you should know that it is uh, seen most commonly in the mandibular anterior and teeth are also vital and not caries then you can see the odontoma so odontoma are two type complex and compound Compound odontoma resembles your natural tooth, and the complex odontoma have no resemblance. So in this diagram, you can see the complex odontoma. 
then you can see this bilateral swelling bilateral bony swelling that is exostosis is example of your mandibular tora then we have this starisky appearance this is seen most commonly in burkitt lymphoma then we have paget disease you can see this cotton wool appearance in the head and neck region then we have a cherubism you can see the multinucleated giant cells surrounded by this fibrous stroma it indicates your cherubism remember similar features you can also see in your central giant cell granuloma then this is myresis it's the larvae formation in the oral cavity then you can see the heron or crooked appearance it indicates the thalassemia so now you here you can see the brown discoloration of teeth it indicates your erythroblastosis fetalis in this that is the entrapment of the bilirubin and bilirubin pigments in enamel and dentin then this indicates the midline cleft commonly seen in facial hemiatrophy and scleroderma it is also known as carp de sabre appearance then this is the double teeth and gemination remember in double teeth there is a union of two teeth okay so the number of tooth teeth in the oral cavity will reduce in gemination it's a in a uh, attempt of a two gem to divide into two so here the number of teeth in the oral cavity may be the same so it's example of your gemination in your digit double teeth so don't get confused in this then we have the follicular pattern is the most common type of omeloblastoma here you can see the odontogenic epithelium with reverse nuclearity in the odontogenic mesenchyme then this is the cot that's a calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor also known as spinbok tumors remember here you can see the sheets of cells can be round polyhedral cells and this is the calcified area which is known as cymomas bodies in this inlet you can see the calcified lisa gang rings which is the characteristic of cot so here you can see the islands or coats of odontogenic epithelium So here you can see the islands or cords of odontogenic epithelium intercept in this fibrous stroma, and this is the characteristic of your amyloblastic fibroma. Sometimes you can also see cementum or dentin-like structure. In such cases, it is known as amyloblastic fibrodentinoma or a fibro cementoma. Then here you can see the sawtooth red apex. This is the classical feature of lichen planus, and you can here see the degeneration of basal lamina, lamina and leukocytic infiltration around that so this is the characteristic feature of your lichen planus then comes your immune mediated disease so in this diagram you can see all your immune mediated diseases like your pemphigus pemphigoid and epidermolysis bullosa so this you can see the basal layer so remember the cells are connected to each other with the help of desmosomes this basal cell layers are connected to basement membrane with the help of hemidesmosome and this hemidesmosome is connected to connective tissue with the help of anchoring fibrils which contain type 7 collagen so in pemphigus you can see the targeted tissue are desmoglein 3 of desmosome in pemphigoid you can see the basement membrane or hemidesmosomes and in epidermolysis bullosa you can see the type 7 collagen of anchoring fibrils so these are the few targeted areas you can see in immunofluorescence so now you can see the elongated red apex this commonly present in the psoriasis this is the port wine stain that's one of the capillary hemangioma remember the port wine stain will not disappear it will remain forever in the life unless and until it is treated by the laser therapy so friend that was all about our image based discussion questions if you any doubt you can contact me via whatsapp or via mail and if you want to join my whatsapp webinar or whatsapp discussion with the mcq practice you can message me on the number given on the screen so thank you all please study hard for your exam and keep on working